Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is your boy, Luis Velez, and I am back again with yet another video. So before I start this video, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that notification bell to get the latest and greatest content from your boy. I appreciate all you guys for taking the time to watch the video, and I hope everyone is having a wonderful and blessed day so far. Now, this is a part two, as I have mentioned well i didn't mention it before but i am mentioning it now um i had mentioned it in the comments on the last video that i made uh just just about a day to, just about a day ago yesterday on why i was losing respect more respect for lebron james now i had mentioned about the nfl slave mentality comments that he had made with todd Gurley on his shoulder shop you know i've mentioned about you know basically why uh all of these rumors that his fans love to make about the excuses that he likes to make about as to why LeBron is the best and everybody else is trash in terms of the all-time greats because that's what LeBron was doing. Here's what I think about LeBron. I'm pretty sure the brother means well. Don't get me wrong. But, again, what you have to understand is that this is one of the reasons I was losing respect for him because he is very manipulative. And what he's trying to do is control the narrative, which I have mentioned many times before. And let me say this again. You are deemed a hater. You are such a hater. No, I'm not. What I'm telling you is the truth. The truth that LeBron fans really don't, well, not the objective LeBron fans, the biased LeBron fanboys and the mainstream media do not want to hear. And I think, again, deep down, they know that this man isn't as great as they think he is. But again, he's doing everything in his power. Nike is doing everything in his power. The LeBron apologists are doing everything in their power. And the mainstream media is doing everything in their power to say he is greater than Michael Jordan. When you break everything down, and this is why when I have talked, I have spoken for like about anywhere from like 20, 20 to 50 minutes on all of my videos. And as I dissect and break down detail by detail on why LeBron is not the greatest player of all time. Is he an all-time great? Absolutely. He will be an all-time great when it is all said and done. And he's already an all-time great in his 16th season. As I mentioned, on my list, as I'm being objective, no matter what LeBron has done or not done in his career, I have him in the top 10. That's my opinion. I have him listed at number nine. And the eight people that I have above LeBron James have done much more in their careers than he has. That's why I have him. And what hurts LeBron, again, he has dominated the statistics, but he has not dominated in winning on top of his statistics. That's why I don't have him up. I don't have him at the top. And that's why he is not a Mon Rushmore player. And he just misses the list of the second tier Mon Rushmore in the top 10. But no doubt LeBron is a top 10 player. And it's like, look, you... Think about this. I mean, yo, you leapfrogged a lot of great players, a lot of great underrated players for you to make my top 10. I mean, that's to me, that's a hell of an accomplishment. You may not be the best of all time, but that to me should be nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, you make a top 10 all t a top ten list. I mean, it's incredible. I mean, top five will be even greater. But still, you mentioned the top 10. That's it's quite an honor, to be honest. But anyway, um, so let's get to the down to these theories. Um, LeBron fan apologists have always said that LeBron has never played for a Hall of Fame coach. They mentioned Greg Popovich. They mentioned Phil Jackson. Here is my take on this. LeBron fans have always said that if LeBron ever had a Hall of Fame coach, he would have won more championships. The issue with that, making a statement like that is, is that if LeBron wanted to take advice and be under the tutelage of a Hall of Fame coach. Don't you think LeBron would have gone mm -hmm. and played for that Hall of Fame coach? Because for you people that are saying that Phil Jackson would put LeBron in his place, that's the exact reason why LeBron does not want Phil Jackson, because Phil Jackson would put him in his place. And LeBron is so used to having his way that he would not listen to Phil Jackson. This is the same Phil Jackson that coached Michael Jordan, that coached Scottie Pippen, that coached Dennis Rodman, you're talking about guys with big egos, which is big, that's Phil's biggest trait, being able to manage egos and get them to focus on the ultimate goal, which is to win the championship. Do you want to be fighting about who gets the most shots? Do you want to fight about who is the alpha male on the team? Do you want to fight about why I feel like I'm better than you? Or do you want to put all that outside, leave your egos out the door and focus on one thing, playing as one 
and being able to be saying that you're the best in the world, standing on top of that mountain, climbing that hurdle, and say that you're the best. We went through all these obstacles to say we are the best team in the league and we ended up winning the championship because that's what the game is all about. If you are a great player and you want to cement yourself in history, it's not only about what you did statistically, it's about what you did accolade-wise because at the end of the day, you play the game not only to make money, but if you really love the game of basketball, you care, you want to win, and you want to win championships because that is how you want to be remembered. But this issue about LeBron, if he had a Hall of Fame coach, if LeBron really wanted to play with Greg Popovich, he would have played with him. And quite honestly, Greg Popovich would have opened his mental, he would have opened his mental stability in terms of the game. LeBron would be able to see things on the floor that he probably would have never saw before. And that is one of LeBron's biggest problems. It's his system versus the team system. Team systems have beaten him at the end of the day. With LeBron James' system, it's gotten him statistics, um, but LeBron has had a lot of circumstances that has allowed the LeBron system to reign supreme with his three rings. But let's be real here. When you talk about the LeBron system against the Golden State Warriors, the greatest team ever assembled, according to LeBron apologists, it is the greatest team. It is a stacked team. No, the Golden State Warriors won 73 games. They lost nine regular season games, but they lost nine playoff games. And let's be honest, if you were to put a team together, and let's say you were playing a game of three on three, you have LeBron, Kyrie, and Kevin Love. And you have Steph Curry, Clay, and Draymond. If I had to pick, my money's on LeBron, uh, LeBron, Kevin Love, and Kyrie. Those three are more talented. They're more talented. Curry and Kyrie kind of offset each other, even though Kyrie can, like I said, he is, you can make a case that Kyrie's better in terms of like overall offensively. But even then, so it's like, again, LeBron, Clay Thompson, cross that out. Kevin Love, Draymond, cross that out. Because Kevin Love is better, like, overall. May not be defensively, but in terms of getting rebounds and putting the ball in the basket, Kevin Love is really good. So, yeah, if you had to choose between those two, I, again, I'm going to take a LeBron-led team. Compared to Steph, Clay, and Draymond? No. Here's the, and, the, and what's so crazy is the Cavaliers actually had a deeper, had a very, they had a deep team. It's just the difference is the Warriors had depth, and they played it much better as a team with their chemistry. That's why it always looks so better. But the thing is, there really wasn't nothing wow about that Warriors team. But again, LeBron has Tyron Lue. Let's face it. He tried to get Eric Spolster fired. He tried. To, he got David Blatt fired. He played with Tyron Lue, who, let's face it, people could say he's a good coach and all that kind of shit, but LeBron made him a... He, a it was assistant coach Lou the whole time. LeBron had his way. LeBron was the coach. He was the general manager on the floor. That is the bottom line. So when honestly, LeBron really showed no respect for Ty Lue. Whatever he said goes. You know, there are times when, again, a coach could draw a play, and if a player sees that it doesn't work, he can go to the coach and say, hey, you know, we can try this. A player's coach is able to have that player-coach relationship. You can be able to relate to the players where you can say, listen, man, like, I know you want to try this, but it's like, if this doesn't work, let's go to part B and see what that works. You know, that, and that's the core communication you got to have. With LeBron, it has to be, you need to be in certain spots because it's like, if you're not, you know, um, you know, I can't play with you. Like, you need to be ready with this. And it's like, what happens with LeBron is he tells you what to do without really having a sense of direction. And if you look at the LeBron James system, it's, My job is to get the mismatch on a small guy. I'm going to drive him to the basket. If I get double team and somebody comes over to help when I drive, I'm going to kick it out, just be ready to shoot the ball. And what's happening the entire time is a guy is literally standing on any other part of the court. And it's a one-four set where everybody has to spread out. And I'm not saying LeBron ain't smart to get the mismatch all the time, but it's like what, what sucks about his offense is it's predictable. See, when you have a coach with a system, your plays are unpredictable. 
it's unpredictable because again, when you run actual plays, again, the ball moves. And what happens is you're forcing the defense to shift. So now the defense is following the ball. And when guys cut, it makes it difficult for people to see their man. So even guys unexpected get open for easy baskets, open shots. But that's a result of moving the basketball. LeBron wants to control the offense 95% of the time. And like I said, your stats inflate and it's good for you. But who's really the one eating? You eat. You're, you eat assists when guys make shots. But guys that are multidimensional or guys that are star players can't play with you. That's why their roles diminish. And that's why their numbers drop drastically. And also what I don't like is that this whole notion of when LeBron leaves, um, when LeBron is injured and when LeBron is not on the floor, the team struggles. Here's the problem. Your system is the reason for that, LeBron. And that's because when you leave and you leave your system, your system goes with you. So now guys don't even know how to play. And then it's another adjustment. And that's the issue right there. When you have to, when you, when you can't adjust your style of play after you're so used to playing a certain style, it's difficult. Guys struggle. Guys don't know what to do. And that's why they end up losing the many games that they lose. That's why. But again, the problem also is, is that LeBron is very stubborn. He knows that if he plays with a Hall of Fame coach, as people would say, he would have more championships. That LeBron system isn't going to work with those coaches because those coaches are going to want to play a system. They're going to want you to lower your scoring. They're going to want you to lower your rebound. They're going to want you to lower your scoring. What they're going to want you to do basically is that they're going to take the control out of your hands. They're going to tell you you're still going to be the main option. You will still be the focal point of the offense unless if there's somebody better and they think that the offense would flow better with that other player. But the bottom line is, is that with by you following a system, you're still going to be the focal point, but you're not going to dominate the ball like you did before. And also, it would teach you to be, see if you'd be able to play off the ball. The thing with LeBron is he's been known to play one style his entire career. And he knows his numbers are going to deflate, which is why he would not listen or he would want to play with that coach because he knows his numbers are going to drop. And he's not going to be the same. He will still be effective, but he's not going to dominate. He's not going to have these these gaudy numbers. And that's why LeBron won't play with them. That's why I get I get upset when these LeBron fanboys be like, oh, but he never played for a Hall of Fame coach. But that's LeBron's fault. If he wants to win. He would learn actually how to play in a team system. He would actually appreciate his teammates. He he would actually take the load off of him. The problem is LeBron has the usage rate because of him. Because of him. He can't get his head out of his own ass. That's That's his problem. Like, I don't care if it's the truth. It's the damn truth. He won't get his head out of his own ass. He honestly is delusional thinking that this thing is going to work with him winning. And what's happened the last two years? He's had good teammates, but then everybody struggles. Oh, I thought they get paid to, to score. Your damn system, man. Why do you think the Warriors offense moves so fluidly? You guys may have the better talent, but the better talent doesn't always mean you're the better team. And that's what's happened with the Warriors. Their system proves that they're the better team. If you play a system with the talent that the Cavaliers had, I'm telling you, the Cavs probably believe would have beaten Golden State. Probably. Or at least they would have had a chance. So this whole notion about Hall of Fame coach, if he had a Hall of Fame coach, I said LeBron is too stubborn and too naive to get out of his own system. And I've said this in many videos. If LeBron really cares about winning, he will get away from that and really learn how to play team basketball. And like Kevin Durant, I said, look, Kevin Durant said it best. I did not know how to play basketball until I joined the Golden State Warriors. He said that. And look what it's done. He's been very proficient and has led them to, to have two finals MVPs and two championships. You know, say what you want about the move, but it's helped KD. Another thing people are upset about that, oh, LeBron, and the thing, he doesn't like Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson called him, he already called him out on his posse BS, and that's why LeBron can't stand Phil. So people who are saying that, oh, LeBron needs to join up with Phil Jackson because Phil will get him, no, he's not going to. He'll, ne- he'll never listen to Phil. So get Phil out of your heads because he ain't coming back. And plus, Phil is 73 years old. He has health issues. With the traveling, 
Listen, when Phil was even thinking about getting, if he said the only way he would coach is if he only coached home games. That's not happening, man. No way. Phil's not taking that. Forget it. Just not going to happen. Another thing that really bothers me about LeBron apologists, in terms of the fact that they talk about how that it's never his fault when things go wrong. He doesn't take accountability for his actions. That's what makes me lose respect. And what LeBron does a lot is he goes out into the media to complain. He's gone on to say that, you know, we're too top-heavy as a team. You know, we need an actual playmaker. He was saying all this while he was in Cleveland. I mean, it was to the point where you had even people on his own damn team talk about that LeBron is padding his stats. And what did the LeBron apologists do? They, like, automatically defended him like crazy. Saying, I mean, saying that, oh, you know, um, they shouldn't talk because, you know, they're not even they're not even good players. And they're like, they're lucky they have they're lucky and they should be privileged that they're playing with LeBron James. And I said, you see what I'm talking about? I said, this is I said, this is it right here. This is it. This is something that the players see on a day to day basis. And you have people making comments when they don't know what's going on in that locker room. And let's be real. There was a lot of stuff going on in that Cleveland locker room, that 2017, 2018 season. Another notion about how LeBron, LeBron got his friends all the contract. Hmm. Here's a question. If LeBron is such a good guy and got Kristen Thompson and J.R. Smith their contracts, who I question about giving Tristan and J.R. all that money, honestly, if I'm the owner, why would I just go and listen to LeBron when all of a sudden you guys were the highest paid franchise in the NBA and you were in the luxury tax and what happened was they really couldn't even make moves after that and what did LeBron do he left in his free agency he left and what has that had Dan Gilbert to do he's had to now start trading players so Kevin Love is up for trade Kyle Kova already got traded J.R. Smith is on the trade block you know, it hasn't happened yet for J.R. Smith or Kevin Love, but my point is is that you giving them all these guys all these deals, that's all on LeBron. Also, if LeBron was such a good teammate, why is it that Kyrie Irving was traded on almost two occasions? The first time, it was because Eric Blesso was with his beloved Clutch Sports that they were trying to get him and Paul George and put Kyrie in a package deal with th- two other teams to send him to Phoenix. Now, I ain't going to lie, him and Devin Booker would have been a really nice tandem, you know, for sure. But the fact that you talk about how you're, you're, you know, you're such a great, that LeBron is such a great teammate and that he cares about his teammates. Why And Kyrie hit the biggest shot in Cleveland Cavalier history and helped the Cavs win the championship. No, we don't, we're not going to skip from LeBron's block, all the, who, with the help of J.R. Smith that nobody talks about, to the game stealing free throw when Kyrie's three pointer in Steph Curry's face in game seven in Golden State in the NBA Finals gave him the lead for good. But yet you want to sit here and go from the block to the free throw. I lost respect for that because Kyrie got no credit. Kyrie gets no credit for that. And then and then and then on top of that, they're going, oh well, you know, Le- LeBron w- went to the timeout and told Ty Lue and he pointed at Kyrie. You know what's so crazy? LeBron actually would have got much more credit had he taken that shot. But we know in a moment like that, with the game at its highest, let's be real. LeBron is never going to take a shot like that. He's too afraid of the moment. Let's see. Honestly, he wouldn't take a shot like that. He's just not going to. You think he will, but he's not. And Kyrie got no credit. And on top of that, can you try to trade Kyrie to the to the Phoenix Suns to get Paul George? And it was this, this was the biggest mistake. They catered to LeBron and it cost him. That was the issue. And it's it's just really sad um, that an all time great like LeBron. We're talking about him as 
a guy who's really, really never cared about his teammates like that. And I mentioned in the last video about how he's never attended summer league games, whether with the Heat or with, or with the Cavaliers. But he's such a great teammate. And it's like he didn't even show up until he went to he went to the summer league games with the Lakers to their young players. And I'm not saying you have to attend every single year. That's not what I'm saying. Like sometimes you can't make that kind of obligation. Like I understand all that. I'm just talking about if you really cared about your team, you would at least try to make the effort to do that. Because that shows me that you care about these guys and that you want to do well with them. And it's like, you know, let's try to do the best we can to try to win games. And if we happen to get to the rounds and win a championship. But he's never done that. And that's why I'm saying he's never cared for that. LeBron is about himself. And that's why I've lost my respect for LeBron. So when you come up with this whole Hall of Fame coach, stop it. When you talk about that he cares about his teammates, he put Cleveland in the luxury tax and he walked away. And you're talking about a guy who we could talk about 51, 8, and 8, and I mentioned that before, but LeBron quit on his team two years in a row. He quit on his team in 2014 when they got blown out by the Spurs by a record finals margin. Don't believe me? Watch the finals. Watch how LeBron scores his points. And I bet you in some of those games, Wade and Bosch weren't even in the game. But yet LeBron was still on there. And it's like, you, this is the little things you need to catch yourself on. Why was LeBron still in the game? And it was to pad his numbers. And I'm telling you, if you really watch that finals, because the LeBron fanboys are going to be like, oh, no, what are you talking about? I saw that whole series. LeBron was killing these cats. No, I'm not going to lie. In the start of games, LeBron would go off. Here's a question that I want people to really consider right now. If you remember game one of the 2014 NBA Finals, in the fourth quarter, when the ACs quote-unquote broke and LeBron suffered cramps, do y'all remember that? Here's something I also remember. LeBron at that time was 29 years old. I'm not saying that you can't get cramps and stuff like that, but it's so funny that he suffered the same amount of cramps in the 2012 NBA Finals, and he was three, he was two years younger at that time. But Tim Duncan was 38 years old playing in the same conditions, and he didn't get cramps. Mano Ginobili is 36, turning 37 over the summer, and he didn't get cramps, playing under those same conditions. Tony Parker, in his early th- in his 30s, he didn't get cramps. I just find that really funny. In that heat wave, he was the only player to get cramps. Like I said, I don't, I'm don't. i not saying that things can't happen to the body, but it's just, it's just real suspect, man. Everybody was playing in those same conditions. Something is bound to happen. But yeah, LeBron was the only one that suffered cramps and had to be taken out of the game. That's just real funny. And like I said, if LeBron is such a great teammate, then it's like, how come he's never really protected? You know what I noticed about LeBron? also is that he never really talks about guys on that matter he's mentioned guys in a moment or two with Kyrie and Kevin Love but if you listen to all of his interviews especially in the last four years in Cleveland it was all about we I we I we I if somebody had a really big game it would always say we I we I we I it's like he just skips certain people and I'm like what kind of teammate is that man like That's not a great teammate. And that's what, like, doesn't really, like, impress me, like, anymore. And what happened with his career is that it's kind of like you had to kind of backtrack and reflect on his career to kind of see. And you're asking yourself, like, why is he acting? Why is he acting like a pompous ass? And it's like now you see it through the years. You see it now. And it was crazy when he first left and the decision. Oh, here's another thing. We are three years in, and we are still bashing Kevin Durant for his move to the Golden State Warriors. Durant is a snake. He's a snake. He will never, ever be considered a special player. He will never be considered top 10 or whatever because of what he did. Well, he joined a 73-9 and team. Okay. Okay. I'm going to tell you right now. Kevin Durant, what he did was much worse than what LeBron did. It was. He joined a team that he beat, that he was, that he had a lead three games to one on. He didn't play well the last three games, and he choked. 
So is that's absolutely right. How about the fact that Durant outsmarted LeBron though, in terms of joining Steph Curry and Clay and Draymond and making them into a super team? How about the fact that LeBron is King Cobra in terms of the fact that he's the original snake because he's the one that started the prime super team movement, prime super team movement. All those other teams that those past super teams or whatnot that you guys talk about were drafted and developed. It's the truth. It's the truth. They were drafted and developed. That, oh, Michael Jordan played on a super team. That... And then LeBron trying to discredit Jordan, talking about, oh, Steve Kerr hit the shot. It was money. You had John Paxson in his shot. Money. Okay. But the difference with Jordan is he played in a system where if he got double, he had guys who he could trust. Jordan learned to play with his teammates, and he elevated the play of his teammates. And it's the truth. LeBron has not elevated anything. LeBron plays well with specialists. He does not play with multidimensional Players or stars or superstars, whatever the case may be. Okay, that's 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 just it. And people are hating on the ramp because it's already it's been three years and we're still talking about what a snake he is. It's been three years already. But I remember when LeBron won his first championship in 2012, people wiped it under the rug like, okay, it's over. He had one year. He didn't win. But Kevin Durant's won two years in a row. And you guys are still talking about the same ish. It happened already. Because look at the LeBron apologies. Oh, my God, that happened seven years ago. Let it go. But it's already been three years, almost three years, and you guys don't want to let it go. To be honest, you should have let it go after Durant won the title in the first place. But you guys didn't do that. And it's because, again, LeBron has dominated statistically, but has failed to dominate his era in winning. The LeBron apologists are mad that Steph Curry has three championships on LeBron's watch. KD has two on LeBron's watch. Draymond, Klay Thompson, Tim Duncan, Manu Ginobili, Tony Parker, even Dirk Nowitzki. You got outplayed, you got outplayed by Jason Terry. That's this is this is what they're all mad about. All of these players have gotten it on LeBron. And LeBron wants to sit here and say, I'm the greatest of all time. Yet you have six finals losses. Six. Do you believe that, though? A lot of players have multiple championships on LeBron's watch, but he wants to sit here and call himself the greatest of all time. Because I'm an overall basketball player than Michael Jordan. Although LeBron apologizes, LeBron is a better basketball player than Michael Jordan. No, he's not. You keep telling yourself that, but he's not. He's not a better af- he's not a better athlete than Michael Jordan. You see, at first I was saying that he was, but it's like I looked at Michael's career and I realized that he's really not a better athlete than Michael Jordan. Like I said, he's just physically stronger and he's taller, but that's the only two advantages he has against Michael Jordan. It's the only two advantages. And people calling Durant their snake, I'm telling you, LeBron is King Cobra. He's King Cobra. Like I said, people just hate the fact that they think that they know it all. Like I said, look, Durant is in his third year, and we're still talking about what a snake he is. Oh, but what he did was not different. Like I said, he outsmarted LeBron. But who started this trend? LeBron James. And Durant saw how it was leading to wins. Another thing that's bothering me is how... LeBron apologists talk about how LeBron owns Kobe in head-to-head matchups, and LeBron is 16-6 and six against Kobe Bryant. Here's a stat for you. Kobe Bryant, when guarded by LeBron James, shoots 53%. When Kobe guards LeBron James, he shoots 21%, and those are facts. Look it up. Those are facts. And what kills me is that these are regular season matchups where LeBron had the better teams. LeBron apologists make it seem like if, and, and his fans make it seem like if they met in the playoffs, um, what conference is Kobe playing? He plays in the West. What conference is LeBron James playing? The East. Kobe and LeBron have never met in the playoffs. But somehow LeBron owns Kobe when we talk about regular season matchups. If I, if memory, if memory serves me correctly, 
Kobe Bryant's Lakers won 65 games in 2009, and LeBron's Cavs won 66 games in 2009. Who went to the finals that year? In the tough Western Conference, the Lakers swept the Jazz. They went to a seven game against the 54 win Rockets and six against the 54 win Nuggets. Two very good teams. LeBron lost to the 59 win Magic, and I said that they're a great team, but let's also talk about the fact that when they lost in six games, LeBron was so upset. That he didn't, number one, he didn't shake any of the players' hands after the game. He just stormed off the court. And number two, he didn't speak to the media for two weeks. Nobody even talks about that. And as a matter of fact, David Stern fined LeBron for not speaking to the media. Adam Silver's been much softer on LeBron. But David Stern fined LeBron and told him he had to speak to the media. LeBron didn't speak to the media for two weeks. Two weeks. After he lost to the Magic. And he showed very unsportsmanlike conduct. But nobody talks about that. And then they want to talk about him and KD. That, oh, he owns Kevin Durant. He owned him in the 2012 finals. I will say this. Kevin Durant was not stronger. Was not strong. Kevin Durant was 23 years old, but did that stop Kevin Durant from averaging 30 points a game? But he should, but LeBron short on him. Or the fact that KD shot close to 55% from the field at age 23 in the NBA Finals, but LeBron owned him. How come nobody talks about the fact that in game two, it was a two point game? LeBron clearly fouled KD. And the NBA and the refs decided to give a gift to LeBron to tie the series at one, knowing that Miami had three games at home in the 2012 finals back then when the series was a 2-3-2 format. And then in 2014, they changed it back to the 2-2-1-1-1 format. But nobody talks about that. And what's happened? And in the regular season, all LeBron owns Kevin Durant. Hmm. That's the regular season. Once again, where does Kevin Durant play? What conference? He plays in the Western Conference. Where he only sees LeBron twice a year, just like Kobe sees LeBron twice a year. What what conference is LeBron game? Oh, the Eastern Conference, right? And what's so crazy is in that 2013 season, That was probably one of the most snubbest seasons in NBA history. You know why? I'm going to tell you why. I brought this up on a live stream in LeBron versus KD. So I put this little ultimate matchup between the two players. And I said Kevin Durant averaged that season 28 points per game. He averaged 28.1, but he averaged 7.9 rebounds. Seven point, you get added to eight rebounds and about five assists. The brother had a 50-40-90 averaging 28 a game. At the time, he was only the second player to accomplish that in NBA history. The only other player was Larry Bird, who had done it twice. KD was the second player in NBA history to average at least 28 on a 50-40-90. He led the Thunder to a 60-win season with Russell Westbrook in the Western Conference. And you know what's so crazy? He didn't get a single first place vote. How does a brother average those type of numbers on the Oklahoma City Thunder? And that was the year that they lost James Harden, who went to the Houston Rockets and made the all-star team. This was without James Harden. So more responsibility for KD. KD has a 50-40-90 season and doesn't get a single first place vote. Who does that vote go to? Carmelo Anthony. KD overall had a better season in the Western Conference as the number one seed. Yet he didn't get a he didn't get a single first place vote, and they gave it to Carmelo Anthony. While LeBron's team won twenty seven straight games, they won sixty six games, and LeBron averaged what twenty seven about seven and six on 
56 and a half percent shooting, 41 percent from three. I mean, those are great numbers. He only shot 69 percent from the free throw line, but the field goal percentage and the three point percentage were great. That's awesome. But Kevin Durant had a 50, 40, 90, and didn't even get consideration. You know what's that? But yet LeBron has owned Kevin Durant. Or this notion that KD has never led a basketball team. And yet Russell Westbrook missed 36 games. And when he missed 36 games, he averaged 32, 7, and 5. And almost had a 50-40-90 that year when he led in the MVP. And the Thunder won 59 games. KD may have never led a team to a championship, but he did lead that team. And you saw KD's all-around game that year. But yet LeBron owned Kevin Durant when those guys have never met in the playoffs. If they've met in the playoffs and enough times and LeBron has owned them, then you can say he's owned KD and Kobe. But he never met those guys in the postseason. Well, he met no, he met he never met Kobe, but he did meet KD in the finals. But then let's face it, KD has stayed in the West his entire career, and then he outsmarts LeBron, one ups him, and joins the Golden State Warriors. And in two years in a row, KD hits the shot of shots back to back years. And he's like, okay, LeBron, let's see what happens when you have a better team. If LeBron is the best in the world, and I and I still remember in 2017, Nick Wright and these media pundits picked the Cavaliers over the Golden State Warriors because they thought they had a stranglehold on them. And they get gentlemen swept in five games. But yeah, LeBron has owned these guys when he's only met KD three times in the playoffs. Or how about the fact that because he monopolized the Eastern Conference, this dude has avoided four to five playoff matchups with Dwayne Wade. How come we don't talk about that neither? And this is why I lose respect for LeBron, because this guy avoids competition. Also, because they keep saying, oh, when LeBron left, Wade and Bosch didn't do squat. Wade and Bosch were injured in 2015. They missed a lot of games, and that's why the Miami Heat didn't make the postseason. The very next year... The Miami Heat make the playoffs. They beat, I think it was they beat, I forgot who they beat. But whoever they beat, in the next round they faced the Raptors and they went, took them to seven games. And the big difference that was missing in there was Chris Bosh because Chris Bosh was hurt. So they would have faced LeBron in the Eastern Conference Finals. And I'm telling you, Miami would have given them a good run for their money with that defense and the experience that Wade and Bosh have. But they didn't have it. But nobody wants to talk about that. And also, people keep talking about, oh, LeBron ain't scared of the Western Conference. Oh, really? Really? First of all, there's reasons why he went to the Western Conference. Number one, he knew that as long as Kevin Durant is on the Golden State Warriors and Golden and the Golden State Warriors have this team together with the LeBron teams that he's had because he refuses to play in another system other than his own, they were going to dominate him. Team systems beat LeBron systems, and those are just facts. That's why he left the Eastern Conference. But also, if you remember, the Boston Celtics were without two key players in Gordon Hayward and Kyrie Irving. Had Kyrie Irving been on that Celtics team that took him to seven games, there's no way in hell the Cleveland Cavaliers are going to the finals. But we also know that the NBA did not want to allow LeBron to not make it there. And this is the the thing also. With LeBron's ex-teammates and stuff like that, I'm telling you, Kyrie would have loved to knock off LeBron. And also, if you remember, Kawhi Leonard got traded to the Raptors. The emergence of the Philadelphia 76ers, and they now have Jimmy Butler. You're talking about, you know, the Indiana Pacers playing well. And you're talking about the Milwaukee Bucks playing well at the top. So with all these improved teams in the Eastern Conference, LeBron does not want to go through a tough road to get to the finals, which is why he went out West. And he did not want to lose to a former teammate because then the notion would have been like, oh, you're nothing without LeBron, but when Kyrie has a good team and he beats you, oh, it's because he had this, this, and this, and this, and this. And this is what we do. When it's other players, it's because, oh, he had so-and-so and LeBron had nobody. It's a team accomplishment when LeBron loses, but when LeBron wins, he did it by himself. 
It's always been that way. And that's why I, I lose respect. And the thing is, it makes it hard for me to like him when LeBron constantly opens his mouth. It's like, dude, shut the hell up and just play basketball. I would have more respect for you if you just shut up and play basketball. That's it. But you don't want to do that. You just rather keep talking so that you can hear yourself and gloat over yourself on how great you are Mm -hmm. and how your fans think you're amazing and how great you are. And that's why you've had the career that you've had. This is why I don't have the respect for you that I once had because of what's transpired and how you've went about it and how you constantly complain. And it's like you've had all these privileges and you're still complaining. And you fail miserably. That's the issue. But you want to sit here and say you're the greatest of all time. And it's like you didn't want to face Kawhi Leonard. You didn't want to face Giannis. You didn't want to face Kyrie. I'm telling you right now, you want to avoid all those matchups. LeBron, like I said, he has a better team with the Lakers. But like I said, there's really no excuses because they're really good. I just want to see that when he lose, what's the the next excuse going to be? Oh, you know, we weren't expected to do nothing this year. Oh, really? So now if you lose in the rounds, it's what we weren't expected to really go anywhere. When I've heard some of your fans say, oh, watch, the Lakers are going to be in the Western Conference Finals. Oh, the Lakers are going to go to the finals and win the championship, all my words. If I hear this nonsense from, from that, and you guys don't win in the playoffs, I don't want to hear what we weren't expected to win anyway. Because all you're doing is exposing yourselves. Because I'm hearing some people saying, oh, well, the Lakers are going to win the championship. You'll see. Well, I'm going to say this right now. Magic Johnson has some decisions to make. And I'm interested to see who is he going to move to see if the Lakers can actually contend. Because they have a good team. But we'll see what happens. But this is the reason why I've like lost respect. And it's like LeBron... Come on, this is the same dude who texted Paul George. He texted Kevin Durant to see if he wanted to work out with him. LeBron thinks he's so low, yet when he get caught, he never talks about any of this stuff. See, he doesn't talk about it. But then we don't even talk about the fact that his boy, James Jones, quote-unquote the GOAT that played with LeBron James, helped him get Tyson Chandler from the Phoenix Suns. Like nothing. Just like nothing. LeBron is getting all this help, and he's always been getting it ever since from the time that he went to Miami. I can't tell you the amount of Hall of Fame players that LeBron has played with, the amount of shooters that LeBron has played with. He's played with good to great players. And we're here sitting about how LeBron is the greatest player of all time. No one's denying that LeBron doesn't have an impact on the floor. But to sit here and say that this man hasn't had enough help, it's been the same excuse that's been going on the, at the last eight to nine seasons. And you talk about how Jordan was never criticized. Yes, he was. People who looked at Michael Jordan and said, oh, he's a great scorer, but he'll never lead a team to championships because scorers can't win rings. Kobe Bryant was criticized, and they said, after the rape trial, Kobe got all his privileges and his endorsements taken away from him, and he was probably, he's arguably, he was arguably the most hated man in the NBA for a long, long time. For a long, long time. And Kobe's personality changed from that, from that, from that day. He was immediately hated. So for you people to saying that Jordan and Kobe weren't criticized, you're like, you gotta be kidding me. And it's like, oh, but you know, Jordan was a gambler. You know, Jordan, um, uh, Jordan was in gambling thing. Okay. Okay. And LeBron's never gotten into this much trouble. You know what? I don't really believe that neither. Because I feel like LeBron has gotten himself into quite a bit of trouble. It's just he try- he hides it real well. That's the thing. And again, people need to stop with this nonsense that they're confusing manhood with basketball. Critiquing basketball, not manhood. And that's what these people don't want to understand. And like I said, LeBron, like I said, like he means well and all that kind of stuff. And like I said, I don't have the res- same respect for him that I did years ago. It's like all of this. And it's like at first you don't see it. You know, you just focus on basketball. And then it's like when you start to analyze things and the way things go and like, listening to these interviews. 
Like when he made the decision, he could have just went to the Cleveland front office and said, you know what, listen, whether you have a relationship with them or not, you know, you still got to be professional at the end of the day. LeBron was unprofessional. They're like, well, Dan Gilbert is a bad owner. Yeah. Let Dan Gil Gilbert show his unprofessionalism with throwing that letter at LeBron. That's showing his true colors. But don't sit here like LeBron wasn't unprofessional. I mean, he had to be sedated. He quit on his team when the Cavaliers were picked to win in 29 and 2009 and 2010 to make it to at least to the championship round, and they fell miserably. To sit here and make a one-hour decision on ESPN to let everybody know that you're going to another team? For what? All this for media hype and attention? And like I said, that LeBron welcomes this self and his self-inflictions that LeBron loves to do. Like, dude, what were you expecting, man? Like, you sound ridiculous every time I hear you talk. Just, and like I said, everything that LeBron does is with his friends. Like, if he's addressing a problem, it's always with his friends. It's never with a, a group of people who you would think that if LeBron had a set of balls, he would say, you know what, I have a problem. Let me meet you guys face to face and settle it. But have you really seen LeBron in any of these networks? No. Like, why won't LeBron show at Fox Sports 1 with Laura Ingram when she told LeBron to shut up and dribble? She's absolutely right, because that's what LeBron is good at. But do you think LeBron is actually going to take his time and actually go up there and just confront her on that? No. I even bet he probably even paid her off. Who knows? Because if you remember, according LeBron is actually really paying Fox, if you ask me. Because they glow over LeBron constantly. And this is why I've lost respect, because this guy thinks that he is an expert, that he has an Albert Einstein brain in politics, in race, and in football. He thinks he can plug himself into anything and speak on it like he's some, some big-ass expert. And then you're getting on Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan ain't do nothing for the black community. Why did Michael Jordan not speak on it? Because Michael Jordan is not an expert in that subject. And he was smart to not do that. Oh, and Michael Jordan ain't never do charities. He's done plenty. It's just he didn't he didn't advertise it. He didn't publicize it. LeBron publicizes these things for attention. And the I Promise School, it's BS. It's not even really being funded by him. So LeBron's even really not even losing. 80% of the money is coming from the damn city. That's not coming from him. And then this is the problem. And then you have this notion that LeBron is such a good Samaritan. Like, stop it. And this is why it's like LeBron is contradicting himself and the people that continuously uphold, that appreciate and worship LeBron. That he's doing this amazing job when it's like all he's doing is just following orders. So once again, I ask you, LeBron, does the NFL have a slave mentality or are you a slave? Because if you ask me, you're the slave, man. You're the slave. And I'm asking you to show you that you're your own prisoner. They're telling you to speak out. You're not speaking out on your own. Because if you did, you would, have not, you would not allow Nike to control you. But you know it's making you millions of dollars. You're making a ton of money. And the minute that you speak out against elites, they will have no hesitation to try to take you out. And the worst part about it is, LeBron, you have a family. So think about that for a second. If they somehow don't get to you, you don't think that they're going to go anyone after one of your family members? This is what happens when you sell your soul. You don't, you're not in control anymore. And this is why I continue to say, guys, that I love to watch sports, but what I don't appreciate is that I will never, somebody could be my favorite player and I'm just a fan, but I'm not going to sit here and go crazy. It's for the younger kids, it's okay because it's like, again, to them, it's their idol. So they don't really know any better. They can be smart, but again, they don't really know any better. And it's like, they don't really understand what goes on behind closed doors. So everything you see is a mask. It's a smoke screen. So they really don't understand. But I'm telling you, I don't worship athletes. I don't worship celebrities. I can listen to their music without a problem. 
And I can say it's a really good song. But what I try to do is I listen to the message of this damn music and what they're saying. So when I hear kids say that I want to be like LeBron James, I want to be like Beyonce, it's like, okay. But they're not educated on the truth. And so what 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 society is doing is they're educating you how to be brainwashed. You're getting false education. And a lot of times people react with without logic. They use their feeling, they react with their feelings more than their logic. And that's why when I hear somebody say, talk about a slave mentality, it's like he didn't even mention his own league. I was like, wow, so if you didn't mention your own league, are players really slaves? Because everybody's making this money. It's become a player's game. That's what it is. It's a player's game. But yet they want to sit here and talk about that it's a slave mentality. And my thing is you can't compare to other people who are less fortunate if you're in a much better position than they are. And that's why when I hear that LeBron is this good Samaritan, he is absolutely none of that. And like I said, maybe the brother does mean well in terms of a person, and I don't know, again. But these rituals that LeBron does, these rituals that other players do, like I said, these guys are in a much better position. They sold their soul for riches, and they're successful. But why are a lot of people upset? It's because, again, they're not in control of their lives like they think they are. That's why there are people who are depressed, who go through things in life. I mean, we go through things on a regular basis, but think about that. Yo, it's something to think about, man. But anywho, so this is, once again, Lewis checking in. You know, again, it's a long video, but it's like, once again, I dissected everything that I was going to say, and this was a part two. I may have mentioned some things before, but it's like, I got to continue to spread this message because, again, we're trying to get people out of this delusional tactic. There's nothing wrong with cheering for a player. There's nothing wrong to as having LeBron James as your favorite player. There's nothing wrong with Le- being Le- LeBron James you know, in your eyes being the greatest that you've ever seen. But when you're comparing players and clearly one is better, you know, you can't be coming with these delusional these delusional aspects. You just can't. And it's like the argument is not there and people are trying to make an argument like it still exists. It's like beating a dead horse. Like the horse is dead. How much more are you going to beat it when you know that you can't beat it anymore? So it's like you're find you're, it's like artificial intelligence. You're trying to find artificial ways, like trying to find you're trying to find reasons as to why you think that something could still be possible when it's not, when you know that there's no way it's possible. And also, let me leave you with this question before I go. See, people keep talking about if LeBron wins a championship in LA, he has a case to be the greatest of all time because he would have won a championship in three different cities. Think about this, though, now. He's lost two championships in Miami in four years when he was making the claim that he was going to win not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, six, not seven, but eight consecutive championships. Like, they're the modern-day Boston Celtics of the 50s and 60s. He went to Cleveland. He's lost. He's one in three in the NBA Finals as a Cleveland Cavalier. So he lost three times. Three out of four times in the NBA Finals as a Cleveland Cavalier. So you think about that. On top of the fact that if he were to lose with the Los Angeles Lakers, think about this now. We want to talk about how LeBron has won a championship in every city that he's been since he went to Miami. But how about the fact that if LeBron were to lose a championship round in a Laker uniform or never win a championship or even get to the finals. Think about this. That'll be the third city in which LeBron failed to win a championship. And if he doesn't ever make it again, hey, at least you could say that your finals record didn't get worse, but you'll belong right with the logo close to Jerry West. He may have lost more finals than you, but technically you should have the same record as he has. 
But think about that, folks. We gloat on if he wins a championship that he might have a case for the GOAT because he's won a title in three different cities. But if he loses, he would have lost a championship in three different cities. Also, as I mentioned this in a live stream, that LeBron's 16th year with his 16 with the LBJ 16 shoe line, the LeBron 16s, and he's talking about the 2016 NBA Finals beating a 73 and 19. Once again, another fool for thought. But once again, this is your boy Lewis checking back in with yet another video. I hope you guys appreciate the video. I, it was long, but I guess I broke down everything, and I want to make sure you guys again understand exactly what I'm saying. And make sure to like the hit my like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Make sure you are getting the latest and greatest content from your boy. Once again, I want to thank you guys for taking the time and listening to me, man. I truly appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And make sure to share this video, man, to anybody. So for anybody who really wants to like get a dissection of what I think on my thoughts about this. So once again, this is your boy Lewis. And once again, man, much love to you, all of y'all, man. Have a blessed day. Peace. Deuces.